Hey, thanks for watching. I'm going to talk today about how I go about getting new clients. So my philosophy with Outbound Sales is you have to be consistent. You have to be contacting 50 or 100 new people every day. You have to be putting out uh, posts on social media or you have to be putting out some sort of effort every day to get new clients and make sure people are hearing about your brand. It can't just be something you need to you do when you need more money or when your pipeline is completely empty. Um, it needs to be consistent if you actually want to grow your business and make your business successful. So I'm going to go over some of the steps that I use to go about getting new clients. Uh, so the first thing I do is I build a list. So I hire uh, VAs overseas to build lists for me. I provide them with training on everything I want them to do so that I know exactly what they're doing and how they're building the list. Uh, but this is an example of a list that I built for, that I have my VA build for uh, tech companies. So I always want to make sure that I provide the VA with this data at the top uh, so that they get all the information that I need. And what I use this information for is um, for making the emails personalized. So in this case, I just had my VA find the full name of the decision maker, and I can use this little Excel formula to extract all the first names. And what you want to make sure you do is you want to control copy edit, paste special, and paste the values only so that it actually shows up as this. And I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. Um, what happens is if you come here to copy the name, you get this formula instead. So <clears throat> I make sure to get the C, uh, usually the CEO or the owner, or whatever it might be. Um, so if you're targeting smaller businesses, usually the CEO, the president, the owner, I always get their location too because I like to mention it in my cold email uh, just to make it more personalized. So I mention their company name, their first name, and their location. Um, so next is the email copy. So now that I have a good list, I want a uh, good email to send out. So I like to keep mine really short, usually one or two sentences. All I say, so if I'm generating leads for someone and that's the kind of clients I want to get, what I'll say is, hi, Christopher. Um, we're helping tech companies, or whatever type of company they might be, we're helping tech companies find 10 to 15 new customers a month. Um, we're looking for someone in Washington, D.C. to work with, or we're looking for someone in New York to work with. How are you getting new customers right now? Uh, so I usually just ask a question at the end. I don't ask if they want a meeting or anything like that. I just feel like that doesn't convert very well. Uh, because they really don't know who you are, so they're not going to commit to a phone call. I mean, obviously some people will, but people are just reluctant to do that. So what I do is just ask, are you looking for new customers? How are you getting new customers right now? What type of customers are you looking for? Um, so I use a email software to make sure these emails send out. Mailshake is a really good one because it will just send out 50 to 100 emails a day, kind of spaced out. It will help you make sure that you actually get to the inbox. Um, and it, what it also does is it helps track the open. So you know that if your subject line is good and people are opening it, or if you can identify that only 10% of people are opening your email, you have one or two problems. Your subject line is bad, or um, the emails are just going to spam. And maybe that's because your domain is blacklisted, or you're using copy that is getting caught by spam filters. So to make sure that I have those emails going out, I set it up on Mailshake at the beginning of the week so that I have the whole week ready to go. Uh, that even if I don't put in any more work on this, I know that some of the prospecting is going to get done. 50 emails are going to go out every day. Um, what you can do beyond that is, you, so you'll get a few responses, but then if you look at the ones that opened multiple times but didn't respond, uh, what you can do is just cold call them. Maybe every day make 20 cold calls to people that opened your emails several times but did not respond. Okay, so what's the step after that once you've got someone's attention? So for me, I don't like to try and book an appointment immediately. I think a lot of people think right when someone's interested, I need to get them on a phone call. Really, I don't think that's the right way to do it. A lot of people won't want to get on a phone call with you, especially if they don't really know um, what you do. So what I do is I just have a conversation with the person, either by email if that's what they want, or if they say call me, I of course call them and just engage them. Don't feel like you need to absolutely set an appointment uh, just because someone said they're interested. A lot of people will not be at that stage, they just want some more information. So what I do, I keep it very simple, I tell them exactly what I do, and I'll give them an example of what I did for another company. And that kind of helps people understand more specifically what you do. If you tell them, this is what I did for a, uh, my last client, I did this, this, and this, rather than just saying in general terms what you do. Um, so once someone actually wants to get 
on an appointment with you or a phone call, that's when you, number one, tell them very quickly and specifically about what you do, but most of the appointment should be you asking them questions. So you should have qualifying questions ready. If you're generating leads for people, if you're doing digital marketing, you should ask them, what kind of customers are you going after? What are you doing to target them now? Um, how many more customers per month or per year can you actually handle? Um, what, what marketing methods are you using now? What's working? What's not working? Where do you think the opportunities are? So that kind of informs you of what their pain points are. So once you can understand their pain points and where they think they should be going, you can actually propose something that they'll, they will like. Um, so if you get the background information that maybe they think there's a lot of opportunity with Facebook ads, they're just not really sure what to do, you can come up with a proposal for that. So you should not be proposing the exact same thing to every prospect in the same way. Um, so what's my process after an appointment? Usually what I'll do is I will send a proposal to a prospect. If they are interested in signing up, if they express interest in doing something with me, I'll send a written proposal, either one or two pages, outlining what they're going to pay, what the terms are, what they should expect, like what the deliverables are, and then a place for them to sign. Um, and usually, if the conversation goes well, most people will sign that. Now, I would not just send that out of the blue. Don't send that to someone if you didn't actually discuss a price, if they're not really interested. I think a lot of people do that thinking it's a good technique. Um, I don't think it is. If you haven't discussed an actual price with them and they're not thinking about, if they're not pretty close to actually signing up with you, I would just not set, I wouldn't send a proposal to every person you talk to. Because I think a lot of people will just think it's very odd. Um, that's happened to me before where, um, you know, I just kind of had a discussion with someone, but it didn't really go anywhere. And then they send me a written contract. I just felt like it was kind of weird. We're not on the same page. It made me not want to do business with them. Um, but if someone says, if so, if you talk about price, if you talked about terms and they were somewhat agreeable to it, definitely you can send a proposal um, and make sure it's signable. It's best to send it on something like DocuSign. Have the person sign it. They'll send it back to you and you can get started on your work.